Good morning, hello chief and chief lovers. My name is Crystal Rose. I'm the owner of Honey Home LLC located in Northern Colorado. And I am super stoked to be taking over chief's Instagram today. Let's go. Okay, I am so, so excited for this day because I've been using chief for years and I quite literally use it every day in my business. So I am super excited to show you guys kind of like the go-to tools and tricks that I use, how I utilize chief and what a great software it is. And I'm just nerding out that I get to do this. So I'm so excited. I'm going to put a question box on the next few slides so you can ask me your questions throughout the day and yeah, let's get into it. Hi, I'm Crystal Rose, owner of Honey Home LLC, a full service home remodeling and interior design company in Northern Colorado. The Honey Home brand was inspired by the honeybees natural instincts of symmetry, balance, and the time and care they put into making their hives comfortable and safe places for themselves and their fellow community. In a similar way, Honey Home was built with the intention to help you transform any space into your own personal safe haven so you can feel comfortable and safe to be your best self. I am passionate about connecting values of self-care and intentional design into each space that I create, making beautiful and functional homes for my clients. And I believe that better design promotes better mental health. So follow along with me on my small business journey. And if you're looking for a home remodel, just give me a buzz. Cheesy, I know, but also very on brand. So I use version 15 of Chief and one of my favorite new features with version 15 has got to be the depth queue. So I'm in an elevation view right now of a project that I'm working on and I'm going to go up to 3D and then camera view options and then depth queue. And if I toggle this on, it's really nice because you can kind of see that depth. So the countertops and this bench, these picture frames on the wall are closer in reality. And then everything else is behind that. So with this depth cue, depth cue tool, you can really see and kind of highlight which areas you want to. So I'm going to keep it for now showing um, the casework so I can highlight that feature. Okay, so now that I can focus a little bit more just on the cabinets, I'm noticing a couple of things that need a little bit of tweaking. So first, I'm going to remove this shelf. Um, this is going to be a drop-down kind of vanity counter so you can do your makeup, but we'll need to take that shelf out so that you can slide the bench all the way under and not cut off your legs. And then I also want to make sure that this door is aligning all the way across with the under sink cabinet doors. So we're going to fix that alignment real quick. And I also am noticing that I want all of these shelves to go all the way to the ceiling. And right now they're just dropped down quite a bit. So let's go ahead and fix all of those things. Okay, so let's start with this shelf. I'm going to click in. If I click on the shelf, it'll take me straight to the front sides back uh, tab here on the left ribbon. And I'm going to click the opening section and next to shelves specify button. And I'm going to change from automatic to manual. And I'm going to change this number of shelves to zero instead of one. And that should take that shelf away so we could close out of that. And now that's taken care of. And first, before I fix this alignment here, I'm going to double check the height of this cabinet. So I'm going to click into that one, click on this shelf. It'll take me again straight to that front sides back. And I'm highlighting that auto left door and it looks like the height is at 19 and three quarters. So that's what I'll want to match on the other side. Okay, so now to fix this alignment of these cabinets, I'm going to click into this side and I'm going to click on that door. And again, that'll take me to the front sides back. So make sure the right one is highlighted and under item height, I'm going to input that 19 and three quarters 
from the other side and click OK. And now we are nice and aligned across there. And then the last thing we have to do is just um, make this go full ceiling height. So I'm gonna just drag that little cursor up and I'll just have to move these decor items um, manually so that they align into the shelves now. But that was a pretty quick and easy fix and now everything looks pretty aligned. Okay, this is a great question. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna first go up here to the orthographic view tool and open an elevation. So I'll drag that camera towards the house. And um, the default is set so that the windows show um, based on what kind of window it is, how they are opening and closing. So these arrows get shown automatically. To take those off, click into the window and then under the tab that says opening indicators, click on that and you want to click hide and make sure that that hide bubble is selected and then they will go away. Ta-da! Yes, I do. So Honey Home is a full service remodeling, interior design, consulting, um, et cetera company. We have a lot of services. I own and operate it by myself. So that makes it even more vital to use Chief because on any given day, it could be doing things as part of the design phase, or I could be doing more project management, permitting RFQ sets uh, on the construction side. So Yes, I love kind of getting to do both um, the design build aspect and yeah, it's great. I love what I do and I love being able to connect the value of incorporating mental health into design and construction. That's really my passion. I need to feel something. Harry, can you tell me something that'll piss me off? Boba Fett's better than Mondo. Yep, that'll do it. Okay, this is kind of a long story, but I'll try to get through it as quickly as I can. So in high school, I started out working for a really small design build firm, um, and that really sparked my love for the design build process in general. So I moved out to Colorado to attend school, thinking that I was like dead set on interior design. Um, started the program. It was like very art based, a lot of hand drawing, not really exactly what I was expecting um, based on what I had learned in the field. So I ended up switching my major to construction management and ultimately graduating with that and a minor in business. Um, and I absolutely loved the construction management side. I think that that really helped me to hone in on my craft and really understand the background of constructability, how things go together and how to really utilize that creative eye that I had in conjunction with um, being able to build. And then immediately after graduation, I went on to work in project management for a commercial firm building schools and hospitals for several years. And then I kind of transitioned back to the residential realm doing home remodels and additions. And starting my own business kind of came about like at the same time that I was navigating my own mental health journey. I kind of simultaneously realized that I wasn't really happy just working for a paycheck for someone else and that I really wanted to build something um, that I could call my own. Um, but at the same time, I really was craving kind of a deeper connection with my clientele and being able to really understand like the function and intention that was going into the projects that I was working on. So that really kind of both of those things pushed me to kind of start my own business and um, navigate that. I kind of taught myself <laughs> for the most part how to be a business owner, but I'm very proud of that. And yeah, so I'm really, really proud for taking that leap. And um, not only do I get to do what I love every day and do it on my terms, but um, I also really now have an opportunity to help other people create their vision. Um, and that's like the best part of my job. I get to see kind of the transition from conceptual to physical and really create those safe spaces for my clients and talk through with them about how important it is to put dedication and time and intention into your space because it makes such a difference in your life. Um, just your productivity, your overall joy, your stress levels can be 
greatly affected by the atmosphere that you're in. So um, I really pride my company and myself on kind of educating and understanding all of those elements and making it happen. Okay, this is a super great question. I use custom materials quite a bit um, just to get the exact look that I'm going for. So I'm gonna show you how to create a custom material so that you can have something like this. Um, so right now on these walls, I have a Gothic uh, picket style tile as the backsplash, um, but we're gonna create a new one. So if you left click and select open object, that'll open the wall. And then if you drop down to the materials tab, you can see that we have um, our customly created tile on the interior of this wall surface. And it shows you kind of like the little snippets. And if you turn it around, that's the interior wall. So there's several ways that you can get to the screen, but I'm gonna open up select material and this will take us to the materials. And then I'm gonna go to the plan materials tab Okay, once you've got this window open, click on plan materials over here on the left tab and then click new. And then for material name, I'm just gonna name it the name of the tile that I'm gonna put in there. So this is a Bedrosian's tile called Chloe. So I'm just gonna name it Bedrosian's Chloe. And from here is the fun part. So I'm gonna go from the pattern uh, tab on the left to the texture tab. And then the easiest way to do this is to go to the tile suppliers website. And the catch is that you have to kind of have a picture that is like straight on view. So something like this won't really work for what we're doing unless it's like straight on. So usually tile suppliers have like a photo of this sort um, to be able to use. Okay, so I'm gonna just take my screenshot tool and I'm gonna screenshot this tile. So the catch here is that you want to make sure you get any grout lines that you wanna include because the pattern will just repeat. So you want to have a grout line on this end so that it repeats over here again and you wanna have a grout line showing on this end so that it repeats up top. So I'm gonna snip that photo and just save it on my computer somewhere. Then we'll go back to Chief and under this texture tab, if you click. All right, so I'm gonna select that new photo from my camera roll. And then for the scale right here, you're gonna wanna know how big these tiles are. So this is, in real life, it's a five by five tile. So I wanna make sure that the pattern is repeating and it's showing the right size. So if this is a five by five tile, there's two across and two high. So I want this to be 10 by 10. So that's realistic. And then I'm gonna uncheck that retain aspect ratio so that it doesn't give you any problems. So you can do this for any shape tile um, and see it changed kind of the layout there based on the sizing. So if it was a rectangular tile, you know, and if it was a three by five, depending on how many in this little snippet you have is going to determine what your new scale is. And then I always do down here where it says bump map, I always browse. Okay, so I always just do the same photo for the bump map that kind of helps get the texture correct. And then I'm going to go back to the tab over here on the left called pattern and we'll just do pattern from texture. So it'll duplicate so that if you're in an elevation view, it'll show you kind of the pattern on the elevation as well, instead of just being blank. So then you can go ahead and click okay and click okay again. And if you're already in your wall surface, it should auto populate here. Um, if you're not, you'll have to just go like reassign it to the wall. But then we have a gorgeous blue tile and I can use this little dropper tool up here to 
grab it and put it over here. And now we have a brand new kitchen look. Cute. Okay, great question. Um, where do you start when creating a mood board? So I always personally start with a color palette. Um, choosing colors first can really help nail down the feelings that you want to try to portray. So because it's called a mood board, we want to be evoking feelings in our clients. Um, and that can be done very effectively through color. Um, so color theory and color psychology are great tools to kind of understanding how color works and, um, every single color has meaning and different emotions that it can evoke and that can help you to represent kind of what you're trying to portray based on the client's needs. So I always start by asking my clients how they want their space to not only look but more importantly how they want it to feel and then based on some of those adjectives that they're giving me I can start to narrow down kind of a color palette from that. And then once you've locked down kind of the color palette, that can kind of help you decide on what style you're decorating in. So a lot of times design styles have association with certain colors. So for example, modern style has a lot of neutrals and then pops of really bold and bright colors. So if that's kind of what your color palette's looking like, then it can kind of open the door for you to get research modern furniture and accessories and kind of decor that you're looking for. So a few slides back, I posted links so that you can shop by your personal style for decor and things like that. And I also just launched a paint color guide, which goes into color theory and color psychology. So if you're interested in learning more about that and how that could help you kind of start your project off, I highly recommend downloading that because that's a great tool for learning kind of how to express what your client's looking for. So I'll put that on the next slide. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show you is how to create kind of like a decorative paneled wall like this. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps. I usually do this by creating, um, using the 3D solid tool. So I'll kind of show you how that works. Okay, so first I went ahead and just pulled an elevation of this wall so I could see it a little bit better. I'm going to leave the vertical ones and just show you with the horizontal so we have a little marker. Um, so I just go up here to this blue 3D square and click on 3D solid. And then for my first one, I'm just going to draw from the top to the top. And I'm just going to make it look roughly the same size as these other panels. So that's a good start. And then one of my favorite tools is the copy and drag tool. So I'm gonna select this one that I just made and down here on the bottom, there's a little guy with three blocks called multiple copy. I'm gonna click on him. And then I'm gonna click on the center button one more time and I'm going to choose evenly. Okay. I made that top one a little bit of a different color so that you can tell the difference. And once I have that selected, I'm going to go down here, click the multiple copy tool, click that center button, and then keep even evenly distribute copies while dragging. And I'm just going to try five copies and we'll see kind of how that plays out. So this will drag evenly across and then I'm just going to end it at the very bottom there of the wall and make sure I get it all the way to the bottom and then voila did that and then I'll just go back and eyedropper the paint color so that it matches everything make sure I get all those new panels Okay, and then if we go back to our 3D view, we have a gorgeous paneled wall for this room. 
Oops. Yay. y'all i am out of here thank you so much for spending the day with me i had an absolute blast showing you everything i do with chief and hopefully you had fun and learned something and make sure to follow me on my honey home page and stay up to date with all the latest projects and upcoming exciting news thank you so much bye